My name is Belares and this is Ruthless Review. Now, to continue this review with my minimalist conversationalist skills and even worse reviewing skills, we will dive into the movement mechanics overall. What I don't cover here will probably cover in other videos since I am doing the complete overview of all these four games. Now, cyberpunk movement is quite disappointing. You do go forward if you hold the button, but that is as cool as it gets. Walking outside cutscenes is subpar. Running is faster than walking, I mean, imagine that. Of course, Cyberpunk whole point in movement is dashing while running. And after that dashing and jumping, because you are always too slow to move at some decent speed through the map, since the map is absolutely massive. So if you are not inside crouching, the whole movement is just meh. The animations for walking are also subpar, but they are subpar for what it is supposed to be, since Cyberpunk should at least have some parkour variations where there are none. Going up or down also makes no difference, the speed doesn't change concrete or dirt, same speed, just very big meh. You have dashing that propels you forward and gives you a boost of speed, but again, same as everything else, that is about it. So it's pretty much the same as in every other game, so zero points for that. And man, 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 Red Dead Redemption 2, 180 degrees again and again. Movement in Red Dead Redemption 2 is actually exemplary. And it's so weird that in the game where you are actually really slow and more human-like than in other games, the movement is made to be done so well. Walking looks properly natural, running looks natural. The most amazing thing is that when you walk or run in one direction and start running in the other, you don't just skip pixels and swing around like in most other games. You actually stop the momentum of your body, turn properly around and start walking or running in the opposite direction. So I will give plus two points to this since the devs actually put some effort into the goddamn walking. Where in Red Dead Redemption it's generally irrelevant if animations for movement are good or not. And in other games where that would actually be imperative it's just blatantly subpar. Walking and running through the mud actually slows you down, same in the water, and also has the goddamn good animation while doing so. And also up the hill, down the hill, it speeds you up, slows you down, it works as properly as it should, as it would normally in real life. So I will give plus one points additionally for the proper difficult terrain movement. So walking within Warframe is fine, nothing out of this world, but almost every single Thanos slash frame walks like a complete unit, like trying to convey that if you cross their path they will erase your path forever, but generally it's quite okay. Running is also quite standard, animations for it are standard too, but what sets Warframe apart from other three games is that you have to use roll and slide if you want to have some decent movement speed, even though you do not really need to fly through the maps or anything, since most missions are made to be like dungeon levels and are not overly big. And the open world parts are certainly bigger, but still you would be able to traverse them by simply running through them. But again, it is ingrained into the core movement mechanics that you use roll mostly, but with slide and roll at the same time your move, you move uh, quite further and faster, and the game is of course made to be played as extremely fast pace. The only plus for rolling is that it looks a little bit cooler, you can do somersault forward and backwards on the ground or in the air, also left and right, but that is about it. It looks a little bit cooler and that is it, so zero points here. So, walking within Witcher is normal, nothing special, jog running is also normal, running also quite normal, 
nothing special here, functioning well, and that is it. I mean, Geralt, when walking, it's pretty much the same as w within Warframe. He walks like a complete unit. When he stops running, he actually needs to break like you normally would. You, do ju you don't just freeze in place when you stop holding the moving button. But it generally is all just okay and nothing extravagant, so I will give this zero points. You can actually later in the game, once you do not waste as much stamina as like when you start the game, run across the map with ease, despite it being quite massive map and there is no need for horse or any form of uh, real transport. So that will be the only silver lining with running within Witcher outside of normal sea of movement here. Crouching here is also meh. You go down and slow, you are more hidden behind obstacle, and that is about it. With cyberware or talents you can move faster while crouching, even run, slow run while crouching, but again, it's about it, so it works the same as in most other games, so zero points. And crouching in Red Dead Redemption is okay, you can go slow, you can slow run while crouching by default, you don't need talents for it, you are less visible and it's easier for you to hide, but that is about it. I mean, it's not Assassin's Creed, so zero points. Crouching here is below me. You go down, you slowly move, but you are not better hidden amazingly, since stealth here is out of the question unless you can become invisible, which defeats the purpose of crouching like in most games, where it gives it at least some functionality, but zero points since unless you're playing Desperados 3 or Shadow Tactics and similar games like that, the crouching is pretty much pointless beyond just existing for the sake of it. Now there is no crouching within Witcher, which, I mean, what the hell. I get it that the game is made where you do not need crouching, but what the hell. At least I expected these kinds of most basic controls to exist, if for nothing else, than just for the sake of it. So it's minus one point, because what the hell. Now for Cyberpunk I would have expected that sliding would be at least half decent, but it's just mostly abusively bad. Only the animations are decent, uh, where you actually push your both legs forward and it shows that you are sliding, but that is about it. Jumping out of a car without talents, you cannot slide, you just slam into the ground. And if you're trying to slide downwards, you also just slam into the ground. So, without talents, sliding is just okay, same as most other games, so zero points. Now, there is no voluntary sliding in Red Dead Redemption 2, unless you're rolling down the hill while dying mainly. You can slide if you can actually find well enough slope to do so, same goes for you and your horse. If it's too big of a slope, you'll will just learn the true meaning of rolling down the hill, but that is about it, so zero points for actual realism. Now sliding here actually works compared to cyberpunk, you actually slide on flat surfaces and if you're trying to slide downhill you have much longer slide with limited controls, but you do slide properly forward as you would expect. The actual sliding has no real functionality, it actually did a decade ago when the game was early in, but as it developed that functionality has been lost in the place of fast pacing, so zero points for this, but it is nice. Now there is no real sliding in the game, but there is rolling, and that only if you are in combat. You don't have any special movements outside of combat, just walking and running, but it generally is not too important, so we'll give this zero points. The sliding that does exist is sliding downhill if you can, again, like in Red Dead Redemption 2, if you can find one proper enough slope to do so. You can have some control over it, but that is about it. 
and you can do the same with the horse but horse has some problems with it even with it even trying to do that if you even manage to get it to go downhill now jumping cyberpunk jumping is also subpar animations are bad your legs don't really move even when you double jump it's like you are standing and are just pushed upwards by nothing the only way jumping works somewhat well is when you dash and jump where it gives you quite decent distance and higher speed but it's generally quite underwhelming for what it is supposed to be so i will give this minus one point Jumping in Red Dead Redemption 2 is also just basic as would be expected from normal people that cannot jump a few meters in the air, so zero points for that too. Now jumping in Warframe is actually something else. There is normal jumping as would be normal for games of this kind, and then there is double jump by default, and then there is massive spinning jump that you do by sliding and jumping at the same time and if you look upwards you jump incredibly high or you can jump under an angle or forward the same way so i will give this plus one point because it works incredibly well now jumping in witcher is just standard you go up and come down after some time animation for it is normal it's like in Red Dead Redemption 2, so nothing special, so zero points. Climbing in Cyberpunk is amazingly better, because there is at least animation for it. It should not be something to be used as a higher positive than other stuff, but everything else is just really bad. When you climb, you at least catch onto the ledges and pull yourself up. And if you run across a lower obstacle, you actually vault over it nicely, but zero points since it is quite standard. Climbing in Red Dead Redemption is also basic, again, as would it be expected from normal people. John slash Arthur jumps a little bit, climbing is pulling up like anyone normally would, vaulting over obstacles is also simple and normal, so zero points for this again. So climbing within Warframe exists as normal, where you would grab the ledge and pull yourself up, which is okay, it is standard, but there is also just running up the wall, which is awesome, and of course it is not used that much today, that is very rarely, but when they added wall climbing it was a game changer since it did not exist before at early stages of the game it was an absolute challenge to climb up stuff because there were no high jumps either same as no wall running so i will give this plus one points to the wall climbing since it can be used amazingly still today if for nothing else then just for fun Climbing is also normal, you grab onto ledges and pull yourself up. Only difference from other games is that you is that if you are climbing onto the wall, Geralt will, will use his legs to push up, and if it's a ledge with empty space in front, he will swing and would have to pull harder and with more difficulty to climb up, so I will give this zero points for bleak normal realism. Ladders in Cyberpunk are also basic, you go up and that is it, if you hold sprint button you go faster, going down is also basic, you do slide if you hold sprint button while going down the ladders, but you will be using ladders so rarely that it's amazing that they even exist in the game, so zero points. Climbing ladders in Red Dead Redemption 2 is normal as it can be, you go up, you go down, and I would suppose that is it, so zero points for that. No, there are no ladders in Warframe, at least none to climb, they just exist as an ecstatic, but it's okay since there is no real reason for a functional ladders to exist and stand or are almost flying badass machines, so zero points for that. Ladders within Witcher are pretty much as basic as they get. You go up and go down slowly and you reach your goal by hitting the ground. 
up or down, so zero points. Now, stairs in Cyberpunk are just standard, I mean, like across the spectrum. Hitboxes for stepping are just like in any other game, it's like moving up the slope, flat slope. So there is no real stepping up, just moving up at an angle, so I will give this zero points. Now, stairs in Red Dead Redemption 2 are something else completely, I mean, compared to other games, because you actually go up step by step and down also, and you move pretty much like you normally should on the stairs. Every step is its own hitbox and not just a picture slapped on a slope. So since it generally does not exist in most games like this, I will give this plus two points, despite it being quite a simple mechanic. No stairs in Warframe work like in Cyberpunk, just a 2D picture slapped onto a slope that behaves like a concrete and 2.5D if you shoot at it. So it is just blatantly standard across the spectrum, so zero points. And stairs in The Witcher probably are even worse since it's a slope slapped on with a 3D rendering of the stairs that have no hitboxes, but you generally step through them and move up the slope, so zero points, because, again, standard across all of the stair climbing games. And falling in Cyberpunk is also meh, but it works. When you fall down, you actually land on your knees and hands, and if it's a bigger fall, a little blood splatters, and that is about it. You need two to three seconds to stand up, and you take some damage. If it's a fall from lower altitude, you just slow down and oof, sound is made. Higher height obviously kills you, but if you are jumping from a sloped terrain, you will die from middle height jump, which would normally just get you to your knees. But yeah, so zero points here. Falling in Red Dead Redemption is actually good in the, in the game. Uh, you land on your legs properly, you take damage from it properly, and you can take on some height before dying. But most interesting part is that there is an, an incredibly lots of funny ways to fall down, as you can see here, especially because of the ragdoll mechanics, so I will give this plus one points for sheer comedy of it. Now, falling within Warframe is actually cool. There is no fall damage, no matter from which height you fall or jump off. And if you use melee attack while falling, you can do the slam damage from space. Quotation marks. There is no additional effect that depends on the height from which you attack, which is a bummer, but it's cool and in the accordance of the game. But zero points for this, since it's nothing special, but it is quite interesting. Now, falling in Witcher is okay. You go from a higher point to a lower, you hit the ground, and you stop. It's interesting that when you hit the ground, you do a Superman pose once you do so, and if it's a higher fall, you will roll, and if it's even higher, you will fall on all four. Thankfully, they have fixed the height from which you can jump, fall, and survive. Because there was a joke for years about jumping in Witcher because you would jump one step down and pretty much die. And it was truly bad by how ridiculous it was, so zero points here. And man, oh fucking man. The swimming in Cyberpunk is just beyond basic. You go into the water, the sound is basic, taking breath is basic, drowning is basic, speed is basic. I mean, animations are basic, just sad on top of sad, but I will put zero points for this. Now, swimming here will go with zero points, obviously, since John cannot swim, since he doesn't know how, which is tied to the story, which we will talk about later. And Arthur can swim somewhat, but extremely poorly, because he never learned how to swim properly, which is also tied to the story. So it's quite inconsequential to the overall game mechanics, so yeah, zero points. 
No, swimming within Warframe does not really exist, which is beyond stupid, same as many things in this game that are missing, because swimming would add so much depth to the game and levels that could be added and would be absolutely amazing. Maybe even underwater world. When you play, for example, Dyson Sphere program, which is completely un unrelated to Warframe, when you go exploring and you hit the full water planet, it's just absolutely amazing and exploratory fulfilling, even though you cannot swim in the game or go underwater. So, you could basically make much faster playing battling Subnautica, and it would be glorious within Warframe. So, I will give this minus one point for the missing feature. But, now there is only one possibility to swim quotation marks in warframe and that is only in the specific levels where there are dungeon levels with water and when you go in you need to have the archwing enabled through quest of course where you use them to go through water but it's not actually swimming you just fly through the water and it is not much different than flying through the space just again much slower so, zero points for that. Out of all four games here, The Witcher is the only one that has actual proper swimming. When you jump into the water, you put your arms up, that is, in front of you, and dive into the water like you actually should, and you go under. You can actually dive normally to any depths you can reach, holding breath is normal also, you can use freestyle to swim faster or butterfly swimming when you swim slower or underwater. And I will talk about water physics and look in, into that in the later videos. But swimming here again compared to other three is by far the best. So I will give this plus one points mostly for that because it does work actually as it should. Thank you all few people for watching and listening and skipping through most of my videos, as everyone keeps repeating like it's a new commandment. Like, share and subscribe and of course, do not talk about Fight Club.